what does CP for us exactly do? As we said, your SIM solution stays as it is. Your other security solutions stay as it is. They are not going to be replaced by CP for us. No. CP for us will add another layer of analytical capabilities to your existing security solutions. Not only that, it will also leave the data where it is. Now, I'll, I'll take a step back and let's first understand how CP4S works, and then I'll talk about the leaving the data where it is. Now, CP4S, what it does is, it has got different out-of-the-box connectors. Now, these connectors are actually based on something known as stick shifter. Now, what is stick shifter? It's a new word that I just used. Uh, taking a detour, a few years back, IBM had co-founded something known as an open cybersecurity alliance. Right now, there are loads of security vendors who are on this open cybersecurity alliance, that is OCA. Now, the main aim of OCA, it was to create a solution so that security information can be exchanged between different vendors in a standardized format. I'm putting it's uh, one of its, uh, one of OCA's goal in very simple words. OCA's one of the most important goal for OCA was to standardize the format in which information, that is security threat information, is exchanged across different security vendors. That is where Stick Shifter came out. Stick Shifter is based on uh, Stick's language. Uh, most of us know what Sticks is all about. So Stick Shifter is based on Stick's language. Now, another uh, standardized format that uh, OCA has come out with is related to threat hunting. So uh, OCA is also really something known as a Kestrel threat hunting language. We won't talk about Kestrel language in this session because in this session, we'll just focus on CP4S. So the out of the box connectors, those are based on stick shifter. So that means you do not need to learn the, the format in which let's say Curator generates data, or you don't need to know the format in which BigFix generate data. You don't need to know the format in which Splunk generates data. These all different formatted data will be converted into a standardized format because all these vendors are part of OCA, which means that using the out of the box connectors, CP4S would pull the metadata. Now again, unlike an SIM solution, right? In an SIM solution, what do you have? The data is moved from the log sources to from the end log sources to your SIM solution. That is how any SIM right now works. In case of CP4S, the data stays where it is. That is the data that is stayed residing on QData, it will stay on QData. The data that is residing on your CloudWatch, it will stay on CloudWatch. The data that is residing on your ELK based solution, Elastic Search based solution, your data lakes, they'll reside there itself. Only a copy of the metadata is extracted and sent to CP4S based on the query that you are going to run using something known as the data explorer. Now, what is the data explorer? Think about, I mean, so on the CP4S user interface itself, data explorer will be one of the apps. Now, I, this is not your typical application, but let's just talk about, uh, you know, you can call it whether it's Data Explorer or uh, TII, all these are different apps. Uh, that's what we tend to call them uh, in CP4S. Now, using your Data Explorer, you can run federated searches. You can run queries. And those queries are all click, click, click. As I said, you don't have to learn any RDBMS queries. You don't have to run, uh, you don't have to know any Qradar AQL queries. You don't have to know any Splunk queries. You don't need to know those. It's all click, click, click that you do on the data explorer. And because this complete pulling of data and showing of data is based on stick shifter concept, hence the data is very much, as well as the query that you're going to create, that is also very much readable. Now, this, this is a sample query, right? Uh, from the data explorer itself or cp 4 s Now, you don't need to be an expert to understand what this query is doing. This query is just checking the MD5 hash value of the file, if it is this particular value, or if the IP address is this. It's as easy as that. I mean, so the sticks query that, that we are actually firing, it's as easy as that. And again, you don't even have to type all these out. 
These are all from the data explorer. These are all click, click, click. But just to give you an idea how simple the queries become, this is an example. Okay, this or is an operator here. You can have and and not and the rest of the operators as well. Now, whenever you're running any searches on your uh, data explorer, they can query multiple data sources at a single go. And your data sources can be on-prem data sources, can be, let's say, your on-prem uh, SIM solution that has been deployed, your on-prem uh, on EDR solution that has been deployed to your cloud-based, let's say, data lake, cloud-based uh, so security solutions that you have already uh, that you already have present. If you're interested, let's say, in knowing, I'll give you an example. Let's say if you're interested in knowing what has Bob done in the last 24 hours, you simply run a query. CP4S will connect to all the data sources. They can be on-prem, they can be on-cloud, they can be anywhere. It, will, it won't move those data, by the way. It will connect to those data sources, copy the metadata out, and show you whatever it is, whatever you've queried for. It does not just stop there. It will also map this data with Xcourse feed, as well as multiple other uh, threat intelligence feeds using the TII, that's a threat intelligence insights component of CP4S. And together with that, it can it will also assign profiles to your organization for better security threat analysis. Now, what is profile? Uh, let's say your organization um, is an IT powerhouse, or let's say it's a financial organization, or let's say it's a pharmaceutical company. You can assign profiles to CP4S saying that CP4S, this particular deployment, this manage this this looks at and so the company where this deployment has been done, this is a pharmaceutical company, or let's say this is an IT power, this is an IT company. You can assign profiles to TII. So accordingly, and so based on the experience that we have in the security field. The security threat profiles can be assigned to that particular CP4S deployment for better security threat analysis. Again, we just don't stop there. UVA is present out of the box in CP4S. Now, if you're talking about QRadar, we've got a full blown UVA in QRadar. Those similar capabilities are also, we've put that in CP4S as well. So that you can very easily, looking at the CP4S UI, you can very easily identify the risky users that are asserted with different insider threats. And this U and this UV of CP4S is also tightly integrated with the workflow and the playbook, which we'll talk about uh, in our next slide. Now, using our existing solution, right? Whether it's any type of SI in Lookback, you have detected any security threat, yes. But what do you do with that security threat? I mean, say, so let's say there has been an unauthorized uh, change or an unauthorized access. You've got that, you've figured that out uh, based on your existing security solutions. But what do you do with that? How do you respond to that, to that particular security breach or that security threat? That is where the SWAR capabilities of CP Forest comes to the picture. SWAR stands for Security Operations and Response. This, this capability is brought into CP4S using the case management side of things. Now, this is based on a resilient solution. Now, in this case management, what you can do is you can define workflows. You can define how a security threat incident should be responded to automatically by CP4S. I'll give you an example. Let's say um, Bob has made some unauthorized uh, changes to a particular database, right? Now, as per your security policies, the first thing that needs to be done is uh, Bob's laptop should be disconnected from the network uh, so that he doesn't do any more bad actions, all right? Second is uh, a snapshot of the database should be taken. Uh, third is, let's say, Bob's boss, uh, he should be alerted over an email um, fourth step would be, let's say, uh, the HR team should be uh, made aware of uh, of this incident. Now, these, if, if you guys realize, these are different responses that needs to be given in a particular order whenever there's an unauthorized access uh, or unauthorized change has been done on the database. 
Now you can define these using playbooks. And this complete process that we talked about, this is known as a workflow. CP4S is smart enough to understand the different types of security incidents that have occurred. I mean, to say, uh, let's say an unauthorized change in a database, but of course be different from uh, a DDoS type of attack or a malware or a ransomware type of attack in the environment, the CP4S detects. Hence, you can accordingly create separate workflows using our playbook capability. Oh, and by the way, this playbook capability, you don't have to learn any HTML language or any JSON language for that. You, it's, it's all click, 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 and you can create your own playbook, which will, which will, uh, which helps you in defining your workflow. Now, if your CP4 is connected to your assigned solution, all the alerts and the incidents in case of if, if it is integrated with the curator, then the curator offenses would all be managed as separate as separate cases using using the SWAR capability of CP4S, the case management side of things. And it's not that the offenses or the security alerts would be sent to SWAR, no. As artifacts, as proof of the incident, based on the workflow that you have defined, different artifacts would also be attached to the cases that are that would be created on CP4S. And as I said, to create this playbook, right, these different actions that first, you know, that, that security incident that I talked about, right, that unauthorized uh, database change uh, that Bob had done. First, uh, first action was block Bob from the network. Second was take a snapshot of the database, especially the audit, uh, audit table of the database. Third is alert, uh, you know, send out an alert to Bob's boss that Bob has done something bad. These processes, right, these, these tasks, as we tend to call them in a workflow, these tasks, to create those tasks, it's all click, click, click on CP4S. You just select from the left pane, uh, what is the type of task you want to, and then you drag and drop them in this flow, in this water flow model, if, uh, waterfall model, if I miss. That's it in this video. We will talk in detail about the Threat Intelligence Insight app, which is also known as TII app of CP4S in our next video.